Now, I'm very, very excited to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Edna McLean. Um, Dr. McLean um, kind of grew up as an adult here at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. She was a graduate student who came here and, um, and uh, became faculty. Um, she did her PhD in Stanford University and her um, work is, in is on Inubak, the Inubak language. And so um, she was, she's, um, she's the one who broke ground for all of us um, indigenous, indigenous, uh, indigenous um, faculty for the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And um, uh, she's, um, she's got um, a lot of, the, a lot that she's gone through even at the very early, early days. And so, um, Without her, we would we wouldn't have had this opportunity to become the faculty that we are. Um, I saw in 1980 when I first came here uh, when she was just starting to teach Upec, uh, in about sorry in about, and so it's um, it's really an honor to have her back um, to tell her story about um, her agency, her position, and her role as as graduate student as faculty and now as um, uh, Professor Emeritus for the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And without any more, uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. Edna McLean. Uvla lota. Koyarunga mani chume nyaga ma. Ariga kasi marosi ilya tibdiwa kasi malagme. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here and honored to be with you during the celebration of Alaska Native Language Center for the 50th anniversary. Um, thank you. I was happy to be invited to the conference because I wanted to take a look back at what um, has happened. Come close here. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to stand very still and be close to the mic, I guess. So an anniversary is a time to reflect on what has been done, as you all know, and also to take stock of what still needs to be done. And I've tried my best to take a look at that and take that perspective. And this is my perspective of what has happened at Alaska Native Language Center. I began my life in Barrow, which is now Kervik after a name change. My mother as a daughter of Charlie Brower was bilingual. She spoke in Yupik and English. And my father was Joseph Agak. He spoke only in Yupik. In fact, he refused to speak English to us. So our family language was Inupel. And for that, I am very grateful. And when I attended the Mount Edgecombe High School in Sitka, Alaska, I was exposed to many other languages within the state. Many of our, the students that came to Mount Edgecombe spoke their native languages. And we spoke in our native languages until the matrons would come around and then we would stop right away. So it's a, it was a time of, um, of being watchful for others that may object to us speaking our languages. It was not a very pleasant experience as many in my generation faced. And when I was working on the dictionary and the grammars I had access to my parents who helped me in finding the meanings of certain words that I did not know. And at one time, my father said to me, why are you working on a grammar and in your back for in your, uh, for in your back, what is the use? Because he had been under this impression that in your back was not a language to be respected in schools and also in the community because at that time, 
Many, uh, many of the teachers and authorities within the Bureau of Indian Affairs schools were telling them not to speak their native languages in many communities. And in fact, it happened in Barra as well. So, and I said to him, well, dad, I wanted to learn more in Yupik. I enjoy studying in Yupik and I enjoy learning more about what you went through and others within our community. So after that response, he never objected to me calling him. And over the years, I benefited from his knowledge. And I'm glad he took the time to speak it in your back with me. I joined ANLC in 1973, a year, a year after it was passed. At that time, I did not know my in your back. Uh, I knew how to speak in Yupik, but I did not know how to read and write in Yupik. So Dr. Krauss took that time the first, the first year to teach me how to read and write in my own language. I guess the state of Alaska passed, as you just read, uh, I mean, as you just uh, witnessed on the video, in 1972, authorizing mandatory bilingual education in Alaska state operating schools in which students spoke a native language. And the legislators found that traditional and basic language difference in differences in Alaska schools have been overlooked to the extent that the need for an educational program, which incorporates both English and the native language has been vastly underestimated. And often the program has tended to ignore and sometimes belittle classroom use of the dialect, a practice deplored by modern educators, concerned parents and students alike. Senate Bill 424 was passed on the same day, authorizing the establishment of the Alaska Native Language Center. The legislation identified five directives. One, study languages native to Alaska. Two, develop literacy materials. Three, assist in the translations of important documents. Four, provide for the development and dissemination of Alaska Native literature. And five, train Alaska Native language speakers to work as teachers and aides in bilingual education. Senate bills 421 and 424 were passed together. The intent is obvious. The ANLC would help produce Alaska Native language materials and train teachers and teacher aides for the mandatory bilingual education programs in state operated schools. The driving force behind these pieces of legislation were Professor Michael Krauss and Irene Reed among other Alaskans who convinced the legislators to pass Senate bills and provide the funding to carry out the mandates. I joined the Alaska Native Language Center, like I said, in 1973 at the invitation of Dr. Krauss. There I met Irene Reed, Jeff Lear, George Smart, Vera Conishiro, Eliza Jones, Catherine Peters, and James Carey. I was also happy to see that James Narek and Leona Okakuk from Utkavik were already working there. Dr. Krauss was looking for a speaker of Inupiaq who could replace James Narek in teaching courses in Inupiaq since James was leaving to go to seminary school. Dr. Krauss immediately began teaching me how to read and write in my native language. I was not the only person that he was teaching. His students included Vera Conishero, a Shad Siberian Yupik speaker, Eliza Jones, a Koyukon speaker, Catherine Peter, a Kuchin speaker, plus others whom I did not meet. Vera and I became fast friends. We shared the same hour during the afternoon to meet with Dr. Krauss every day. Dr. Krauss surrounded himself and Jeff Lair with fluent speakers and taught us not only liter literacy in our languages, but also gave us skills 
and how to discover the grammar of our languages. <clears throat> it was a time of intense learning and discovery for all of us. I frequently observed James Nareq and Michael Krauss exploring the grammar of Inupiaq with their students. It was a lively class and I learned a lot watching Dr. Krauss take an active role in the classroom. Leona Kaku. Okay. Too loud? Oh, okay. Leon Okako was working directly with Dr. Krauss and as his office assistant, but she was also compiling a word list of Inupiaq words from old sources. And these were later incorporated into the comprehensive Inupiaq dictionary. She also helped Dr. Krauss with research. I especially, especially uh, remember her excitement when she discovered the change of a weak eye in Inupiaq phonology to an A when it linked with another vowel. Not only was Dr. Krauss involved in the Inupiaq classroom, he and Jeff Lair were always in discussion about Klinket, Sukpiaq, Inupiaq, Yupik, or Siberian Yupik, or any of the Athabascan languages in the open areas of the workplace. So you could listen to them. The ANLC was a very busy place and you could feel the joy of discovery as these discussions progressed. I believe that Dr. Krauss and Jeff Lair learned as much as we did. They learning the languages and us, the fluent speakers, developing literacy and learning research skills to apply to our own languages. Many hours were spent discovering the grammars of Alaska native languages. In my opinion, the ANLC has successfully studied languages native to Alaska. The Alaska Native Language Center also produced and disseminated grammars, dictionaries, and short books for use by bilingual programs throughout the schools in Alaska. Some of the productions were short stories, which were done in partnership with other institutions, such as the Eskimo Language Workshop, the North Slope Borough Inupiaq History, Language, and Culture Commission, and other institutions in different regions of the state. Much time was also spent on refining existing writing systems or creating new writing systems. I remember one conference where Inupiaq from the North Slope and the North Arctic boroughs, along with Inupiaq from the Bering Straits, met to discuss and address one symbol which was becoming a problem in the teaching of Inupiaq literacy in the classroom. Inupiaq language students, especially in the elementary grades, were forgetting to include a dot, which was used to differentiate two symbols, the K, that's a K, K sound, and the dotted K, which represented K. So the K and the K were becoming um, spelling problems, okay? The symbol K represented the velar sound and the dotted K represented the uvular sound. The discussion was carried on, carried on for several days, but it was resolved by changing the symbol, symbol dotted K to a Q for the conference attendees. It took much longer to convince others who were already literate. But that's another story. In the early years of teaching in Inupiaq language courses, many of our students were, already, were fluent in Inupiaq. So I spent many hours discovering grammatical patterns with the students like Rexokaku, Nita Tawara, Hannah Loon, Pauline Marie Adams, just to name a few. We also learned to read and write in Inupiaq together. Some of the students created short stories. The fluent teach students in the class helped me with the non-speakers during the daily conversational 20 minutes. I frequently brought in my young son's toys to use as teaching props. 
As the years progressed, the fluency of the students in an Alaska native language began to change. <clears throat> they became less fluent. They also began to mix Alaska native language and English together. Social communication was not hampered, but it posed a problem for academic use of English in the elementary and high school classrooms. Special education classes began to proliferate, especially in the early grades. The reason possibly being the regular English teachers were not trained in how to help their students transition into an academic use of English. This is an issue which has persisted for various reasons, one of which is that regular university teacher education programs do not address this issue. At the same time, <clears throat> many of the Alaska Native language teachers and aides had not received training in how to use their native language to teach the subject content, for example, of math and science. The native language teachers and their aides had been trained to read and write in their native languages, but they had not completed a four-year teacher education program. Subsequently, they were not able to teach math, science, or any other subject in a bilingual classroom setting. Even if they had finished a four-year teacher education program, there was no program to help them learn to teach school subject content in any Alaska Native language. Unfortunately, in the light of the situation I just described, I'm, it must be said that the Alaska Native Language Center and the University of Alaska Teacher Education Program in the Department of Education did not respond to directive number five to train Alaska Native language speakers to be teachers and aides in Alaska's bilingual education programs. An exception to this occurred in the Southwest region of Alaska where Yupik is still spoken extensively. This region benefited greatly from the existence of the Eskimo language workshop <clears throat> which was led by Irene Reed with expert advice and creativity from As Afghan Pascal and Martha Tilak. The Eskimo language workshop began in 1970 at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, but it moved to Bethel after ANLC was established in 1972. As Dr. Krauss stated, my colleague Irene Reed persuaded the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the state operated schools to experiment with the use of central Yupik in four schools. We began to print materials and to train Yupik speaking teachers. This bilingual program was such an immediate and spectacular success that we were soon able to persuade the Alaska State Legislature to enact a law requiring the schools to provide a teacher who could speak the children's languages as well as written materials and develop a literacy program in their language. After the Eskimo language workshop moved to Bethel, it continued to produce school materials for, this, for the schools in Southwest Alaska and to train new big speakers to become teachers and aides. Unfortunately, the teacher and teacher aid training that was given to the Yupik speakers did not spread to other regions of the state. The ANLC that Dr. Krause, Jeff Lair, Irene Reed, and others built responded to some of the needs of the Alaska Native community. After gaining the grammatical knowledge of each language, after refining the writing systems, after training fluid speakers literacy, and after establishing partnerships, Alaska Native language teams were formed to deliver literacy workshops to each region. Excuse me. For example, 
the Alaska Native Language Center and the federally funded Alaska Native Languages Materials Development Center in Anchorage at that time formed a partnership to deliver Inupiaq language literacy workshops for the bilingual teachers and aides in regional hubs. Martha Aiken from the North Slope Borough School District and Kathy Itta, an Inupiaq student at the University of Alaska Fairbanks joined me for the workshops in Nome. The Alaska Native, Alaska uh, Inupiaq language bilingual teachers and their aides came to Nome from the surrounding villages for workshops to learn to read and write in Inupiaq and to create teaching materials for use in their classrooms. Another partnership happened, another workshop happened in Kotzebue with Ruthie Sa Samson and Hannah Loon. And we, do, and we had literacy language workshops and materials development centers for those bilingual teachers and aides as well. Ruthie Samson and Hannah Loon worked for the federally funded Alaska Native Languages Materials Development Center directed by Tupo Pulo and Mary Pope. And I was with Alaska Native Language Center at the time. For this particular workshop, high school students were recruited to teach the bilingual teachers and aides how to use the computers for writing short stories in Inupiaq. I was amazed and delighted at the enthusiasm of the bilingual teachers and aides as they learned to produce materials on computers at that time. It was such a beautiful experience, the interaction between the high school students and their community teachers. Unfortunately, that material development center did not continue. It existed only for a few years. It was federally funded. Another partnership happened between the Alaska Native Language Center and the North Slope Borough Mayor's Office. Mayor Eben Hobson wanted Inupiaq literacy and grammar workshops for the teachers and aides in the North Slope schools. At the invitation of Mayor Hobson, Larry Kaplan and I traveled back and forth to Kalvik to deliver literacy and grammar classes to the Inupiaq language teachers, their aides and the staff of the Materials Development Center at the school district. We alternated weekends and taught every Friday evening and all day Saturday. The partnership lasted for several years. All of our students became good readers and writers in the Inupiaq language. These partnerships were successful and helped to carry out the mission of the newly established Alaska Native Language Center. Unfortunately, the partnerships no longer exist for one reason or another. Besides the teacher training initiative that was established for Yupik language teachers and teacher aides, there was no other initiative to provide teacher training to Alaska Native language speakers who were bilingual teacher aides and teachers in other regions. There was no manpower nor the funds to accomplish directive number five in other regions. The challenge for the ANLC for the next 50 years or maybe for the next 25 years is huge, in my opinion. The question ANLC needs to ask itself is what specifically can it do to help Alaska Native language communities retain and expand the number of, sp of speakers in their Alaska Native languages? What programs and partnerships can be created to train native language speakers to be teachers and aides in bilingual education. What, ex what expertise does Alaska Native language need to help Alaska Native communities create an environment which gives space for growth of their native languages for learners of the native languages to gain more fluency? As Dr. Krause stated in 2002, Linguists have a critical role in providing technical help to language communities which are trying to reverse loss after cessation of traditional intergenerational transmission. As you can see from this brief summary, the efforts of Dr. Michael Krauss and Irene Reed were central and crucial in the battle 
to save Alaska Native languages. As they fought for Alaska Native languages, they also fought for the right of Alaska Native children to be taught in their mother tongues. This legacy must be allowed to flourish. Dr. Krause and Irene Reed are no longer with us and fluent speakers who use their native languages in their everyday lives are becoming fewer in many of our communities. But the desire of the members of the Alaska, of the Alaska um, native communities to train and become fluent in their ancestral languages must be supported. We hear this need and the re this request from many of our young people in each of our communities. They want help in learning their languages. And the teacher, teachers and the bilingual aides within the classroom will persist. I know no, they have persisted over the years without much help from anywhere at times. But the love of language and the love of community and of interacting with their own children in their communities is strong. I challenge the Alaska Native Language Center to rise to the need, this need in the communities in rural Alaska and act aggressively. I hope that this conference will be remembered as a step in that direction. It will be a good step. Thank you.